Hi, this is Jed Shields of PMI Limited. Just going to take you through a visual management tool that I developed a, a little while ago. It's a, a method of showing a number of different products, um, how far it's been completed against different stages, and looking at a timeline um, to see when the planned start was and when it was planned to end and, and when it actually started and ended. So the timeline is using a slider bar to move back and forth. So if we take it back to the start, we can see that all these particular products were due to start on a particular date, which was the 1st of July. Um, the actual start, which is shown in this light green, shows that they all started late for some reason. The dark green shows an actual end, so product 4 you could see start should have started here, 1st of July actually started here 13th of July but was completed fairly quickly finished on the 19th of July and we can see that all the steps have been filled in green so as that progressed these would fill up until all the steps are complete so we can see at the glance quickly how far production has gone on a number of different products so we can see that product 6 for example has only had two stages complete uh, whereas product 1 is almost finished and as I mentioned, product 4 has been finished. We've also got a RAG status to show any particular problems during production. So we can see the product 1, even though it's almost complete, we've got a, a red colour here. Uh, and we've got a note saying that there's a change note issue waiting on John Smith. Uh, will stop production. So you can immediately see that that is probably not going to progress and complete until this change note has been sorted. If we have a look through the time scale now, so clicking on this button will push you through a number of days. This red dotted line is the current date. Um, as I'm recording, it's the 31st of July. So that we can see that anything past that date um, has yet to, to happen. So they're the planned end dates, um, planned customer dates. Obviously, if I opened this up tomorrow, that red line would shift across a day and would actually show the 1st of August. So we can see that as time progresses, uh, things will be left behind in this particular chart um, and hopefully you'll be closing on end targets and hopefully everything will obviously close out before, you're, before you require them to. So in this example, we can see that product two has got a planned end date of the 2nd of August so we've got a couple of days to go before it's due to end um, even though the customer um, requires it a few days later so there's a bit of a cushion there but we can see that we've got two days left to go and quite a few stages left to finish on this product um, obviously flagged red there's a big issue there um, quality issue um, parts have probably gone back to be um, reworked at the supplier so this is the sort of thing that that your production manager or your project manager would need to tackle quickly in order to bring yourself back in line with the times that have been set at the start of the project so it's a very quick and easy way of seeing how things are happening during the timeline um, quick glance of which particular products are looking okay and which ones need a little bit of intervention from your project management team and a good way of, of, of seeing how you're progressing okay in order to populate this particular chart we've got a couple of different um, data entry um, sheets so if we have a look at the the schedule first so the schedule data we've got the 10 products down here and across the top we've got the plan start, plan end, actual start, actual end, required end, plan time and then a few calculations here. We've got an actual time so this works out uh, when you started and when you finished and how many days it actually took to complete it. The plan time is something you just fill in manually say you, you set yourself a target of in this case 21 days we can see that product one was completed in 19 days so you've done it quicker than you thought you were going to do or, or what you planned however you finish on the 31st of July when it was planned to end on the 30th of July so there's still an issue there to, to go in and resolve. If I show you the other data the RAG status data 
what we've got now is along the top we got your different products so we've got product one rag status product one status where you actually type something in and then you got product two product three product four etc so as your time progresses we've got the weeks going down here so if you enter week 20 for example in weekend in 20th of July you simply select the rag state to see you feel appropriate for that particular product and you type something in so currently it's showing that it's a red for product one and the change note that I mentioned before um, so if I go in and change that to a green and putting problems sorted then if we go back to that chart what we'll see now is that the rag has changed from the green from the red to the green and we've got problem sorted so you can obviously fit as much information in there as as you deem necessary we can, I can resize any of these text boxes to the, the size you want if you've got a number of different products we can have a number of different pages so if you had 20 products for example rather than cram everything into one sheet we can have um, previous and next here that will cycle through um, one or two sheets if that's appropriate or you might want um, fewer products on, on one particular sheet so that you're focusing more on uh, a product and have a bit more detail to it the other view then we've got is taking a view of a particular product rather than an overview here of all products we can drill down a little bit and have a little bit more detail so here we can see product one and um, we're choosing a week ending that we're looking at we've got the rag status here for that particular build and if I click on any of these cells we can see the information that has been typed in actually populates this big cell here down the bottom again we've got the the planned start end actual start end required end the time the actual time with this particular product it was completed in 19 days um, I've, I've highlighted red here for the actual start and actual end because we were a few days late we should have started on the first but we actually started on the fifth should have ended on the 30th but we ended on the 31st even though we've got a green for the actual time because it was produced um, quicker than planned so you've got a complete history here of that particular product uh, we've got the timeline here as well for the, for the particular chart um, based around the date that you're looking at so if I had a look at the 6th for example we can see the rag state starts to change I've obviously got no data in for the 4th or anything further than the 20th so if I chose the 3rd or the 8th for example these are, are waiting to be populated so obviously if you were to look at this in a month's time then you would have filled out this data and it would show um, the history as it progresses okay we've got one other piece of, of data entry to show you as well it's actually inputting the data as stages are completed so if we have a look at these 10 stages here for example we actually input that data in this table so we've got a number of different products down here um, all the way down to 32 in this case but we're only showing these particular 10 again we've got a number of different stages along the top um, out to 20 but that that could be as many or as few as you want and so in order to show product one has been completed um, we, we've got stage 10 was open if we just go back and have a look we can see stage 10 is open so that's that's white that hasn't been completed yet if we go back and change stage 10 from open to closed go back to the view we can see that now we've closed that off we've completed that particular stage and it doesn't need to be linear you could you could close off later stages before earlier stages assuming that that's the way the project project or the, the product sort of progresses that's uh, entirely up to you if we wanted more than 10 stages or if each product or project had um, 
a different number of stages. So if we go back to product view here, currently looking at product one. If I go back to the product data, if we have a look at anything with an NA, NA means it's it's not applicable. So we can see that product four has got 10 stages all close at the moment so it's complete and these ones here are not applicable so there's no more stages than that however if we have a look at product 9 we can see that there are a total number of 15 stages in this one um, of which only one two three four have been closed the rest are open so if we go and have a look at product 9 there we go we can see that we've now got uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, there's your 15 different stages ready to be filled in now I haven't shown that on the first view because this was for a specific product that only had 10 stages but we can obviously expand or contract the number of stages shown here to be in line with, with this particular view so it's a very powerful way of showing different projects and programs and products that are being monitored that vary in length um, and complexity, different stages, different times that things need to be completed um, a method of showing exactly how the project or the product is progressing through red, amber, green statuses Okay, so it's a very simple way of showing a lot of data with a lot of complexity um, but being easy to update and manage and control in order to give yourselves the best chance of completing your products or projects within the timescales that you set yourself